Hello, welcome to all of you. This course is Data Structures in JS Solving Basic Math Problems. This course is all about solving basic math problems using JavaScript. So, how we will go about is that initially for each problem we will give a conceptual overview of how to solve the problem. And as a learner, you can work around it or you can solve the problem using the coding exercise given. After that, I will also give you a video solution to how to solve the same. Okay. So this course all starts with basic introduction to why do we need to do an analysis of algorithms. And after that, we will give a basic crash course about uh, asymptotic analysis, which will cover uh, time complexity as well as space complexity. And then we come to the topics of solving math problems. What are the problems we'll be solving? Some problems which we'll be trying to solve are counting the number of digits in a number, checking whether a number is a palindrome or not, finding the factorial of a number, finding the number of trailing zeros in a number, and finding GCD or greatest common divisor, finding LCM or least common multiple, and finding whether a number is a prime number or not, and finding all prime factors, finding devices of a number, and we will also look into sieve of Eratosthenes algorithm, and how to compute the power of a number, and uh, many more. And you, you can all do this by solving on your own as well you have this inbuilt coding uh, uh, editor where you can try to solve the problem on your own and if not don't worry i have given you all the solutions as a video explanations as well so i hope you will like this basic introduction course on data success in js where we are solving basic math problems and hope you will like this course thank you hello Welcome to this video. In this video, we will talk about the importance of analysis of algorithms. First of all, what is analysis of algorithms? Analysis of algorithms is nothing but we compare and contrast different types of programs written by different people and to see which performs better. But when I say which performs better, it is really subjective. For example, let's say I write some program which is really bad okay and my friend writes a program that is really good so you what do you think usually like if i try to run my program in my machine and if he tries to run his program in his machine ideally he should be faster because he has written it well efficiently but what's happening is that it also depends on the capability of the machine so for example let's say I have a very good machine which is like probably the latest gen machine and I have written this program like a crap but whereas my friend who is using very old machine probably some Pentium processors or something but then he has written a very optimized code who do you think has the better performance you will be surprised the person who wrote the crap which is me here my code will perform better than my friends. Why is that? Because the current machine is way, way faster than the older ones. Though my friend has written it well, mine is the winner. So here is where the problem comes into the picture, right? But take the other case. What happens if I take my friend's code and put it in my machine? And my code in his missions? Again, I will win, but this time the difference will be very drastic because I'm running an optimized code. So you see what is the problem over here? Because of the machine's capability, the results are getting skewed. So we are not able to get the right results. So what do we need to do? We need to control this environment. How can we do that possibly? Maybe we can test this program in the same mission by that way you might think we will get the good or correct results right but unfortunately here as well we have a problem even if you're running in the same mission depending on the time of uh, when you run the program the operating system might run other processes behind the scenes so let's say when i run my optimized algorithm something runs behind the scenes and it skews the result but whereas when i run my unoptimized code nothing runs in the background 
so through this way i will still get an optimized code as the best solution which is uh, false right so this is why what we need to do is we need to have a way to measure the performance or analyze analyze these algorithms without these external or environmental effects so that's where this concept of analysis of algorithms comes into the picture so here we analyze the algorithms not based on the environment or machine but based on the mathematical principles so let's see what those are about in the next video thank you okay welcome back in this video we will understand what time complexity and space complexity or in general what asymptotic analysis mean so if you remember in the last video i said we need a way to have to analyze these algorithms without these external effects this process is actually called as asymptotic analysis so let's take example of how this works okay so here is a program as an example which calculates the sum okay sum of a number for example if i give 5 so it is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 so it will give us the sum of the number until that number so here is the option one of the program here we just use the mathematical program which we learned or mathematical formula which we used to calculate the sum of n numbers during our high school right it's n into n plus 1 divided by 2 okay so this is one method to calculate the sum of a number here is the option 2 what we do here is like we initialize a variable sum is equal to 0 and from 1 to until n we just add it to the sum so we loop through and add it to the sum here is another approach so let's see what is the option 3 so here as well we initialize the sum as 0 but then we run a loop inside a loop and then increment the sum by 1 each time and then at last we return the sum so which program is the best obviously you would say option 1 is the best correct but we need a asymptotic analysis or mathematical proof to prove the same so let's try to do that so for example if you see here we are doing some multiplication and then some addition and then some divisions correct these are all constant amount of work multiplication addition these kinds of things so in the overall it takes constant amount of work okay so let's take the example of option 2 here as well so we initialize the sum as 0 and then we run a loop from i to n and inside this loop if you see we do a sum is equal to sum plus i this is a constant amount of work but this constant amount of work is run n number of times correct so hence we say the total amount of work is n times or n into constant times okay this is the option 2 now let's take the option 3 so we initialize the sum as 0 and inside this loop we run until, until n and inside this another loop we have a nested loop from j which runs from 1 to i and inside this we just increment the sum incrementing this sum is constant amount of work but how many times this constant amount of work is performed it is done i or n n times n right so this runs n times whereas this will also run not exactly n times but each time one lesser right but still we can take it as n square times so you see this is constant time this is n time and this is n square times okay through this way we could see like this is really performant but i am saying this n n square and constant time is there a way or notations for denoting the same yes we do have some methods to do the same we do something like you know like uh, log n n power 1 by 2 n n square n cube n power 4 2 power n and n power n and you could see like here i am missing the constant actually constant is more performant than log n and log n is more performant than n power 1 by 2 n power 1 by 2 is more performant than n and n is more performant than n square and so on 
So you could see then we could say right according to this uh, notation this performs poorer than this and this option 2 performs poorer than option 1. So in order to segregate all these things right we also have three other notations. It's called probably best worst and average cases. The three notations are big O notation, theta notation and omega notation. These are used to signify the order of growth of an algorithm. Okay. Big O is also known as worst case time complexity and theta is also known as best case time complexity or average I would say. Sorry. Yeah. Best or average and omega is the best case time complexity. Okay. So what do I mean by worst case, average case and the best case? Let's see using this example. So let's say we are again calculating the sum, but this time we are passing an array itself. Okay. Now inside the sum method, I'm initializing sum as zero and for let i is equal to zero, i less than an i plus plus. So we are running through a loop and then calculating the sum. Okay. So we just uh, each element of uh, array is added to the sum and at last sum is returned. So in this case, if you see the worst case, best case and the average case all are n times because this loop will be running n times irrespective of the input. But let me delete this. Let's take this as an example. Now <clears throat> what we are doing is if you see for the past array, we're getting the length of the array. Now, if the length of the array is less than six, I'm just returning zero. If not, we do this n times operation. Okay. Now, how do you analyze this program? Right. What will you say this complexity or what is the analysis you would say? How we can't say n times or we can't say it's a constant times, right? This is where this big O theta and omega notation comes into the picture okay so now what we will say is like on the best case what is the best case notation it's omega okay best case is whenever the n is less than six so we are doing a constant operation constant operation so we could say the time complexity of this algorithm time complexity meaning the time taken to run okay is omega of one the constant time is also called as one as well. So we say omega of one. Got it. Now coming to the big go. Big go is the worst case analysis. So on the worst case, what happens? N might be greater than six, which means we will be running this loop for n times. So which means the worst case we will worst case time clock time complexity we call it as big o of n times okay big o of n big o is nothing but that normal o capital o you could think it of then you might ask what is this theta it's the average case what we say here is that there is a 50 percent likelihood for this case which is the best case as well as 50 percent uh, probability for worst case as well so on, on average it takes theta of n times so on average theta of n times which means it could be constant times or it could be n times okay great now we talked about this time complexity basically how much time it takes to run okay and in the industry prevalently omega notation is not being used mostly you know like we avoid using omega notations because there is no point right there is no point in calculating the best case alone because more than best case we are worried about the worst case so hence as i said we worried about worst case we mostly use this big o notation but theta notation is also very much used that is for example in the case where let's assume we don't have this if condition okay then we know irrespective of worst case or best case or average case this is going to run n times exactly so when we know the exact time complexity we will use this theta notation again we will ignore omega because omega is not used much so when we know the exact time complexity you use the theta and when you know uh, worst case and the average case then you use theta or 
uh, worst case scenario okay which is big o mostly we will use big o so in this course let's stick to just big o alone even though we have this exact notation in some instance we will still use big o there's no problem because big o encompasses average case as well okay great now what is the space complexity is all about see as i said time complexity is nothing but how much time it is this loop is running right so i said it's big o of n and in a similar way rather than counting this number of loops or something how much space it is used is called space complexity but remember space complexity doesn't include the initially passed input parameter okay so in this case if you see we are just having one or two constant uh, space complexity variables one is like n which is like a constant and some which is like one variable right it's also a constant so we would say it's big o of one space complexity then when will we have more than or greater than big o of one time comp uh, space complexity for example let's assume i also have another variable called let copy array okay and whenever i'm looping through it i am pushing each element of this array into that copy array okay in that case if you see we are creating another space that is equal to the array length correct which means we are having the space complexity of big o of n so that's how we calculate the space complexity got it so in this video we talked about this big go theta and omega and we said like we will only concentrate on big go as well as we saw some overview about time complexity and space complexity great so let's continue in the next video welcome to the first problem of this course dsa njs basic math problems the problem we are going to look is count digits what do i mean by that so on the left hand side you see we have certain inputs and outputs so if we pass input as 9 i'm expecting an output of 1 if i pass input as 99 i'm expecting output of 2 so what is the correlation if you see it is the number of digits whichever is present in the number which we are trying to pass as input if it's 9 there is only one num digit so hence output is 1 if it's 99 nine, the output is 2 in a similar way if it is 999 we expect the output as 3 and 9999 the output is 4 so how can we solve this problem so what is the idea behind solving this problem let's take 999 as an example and let's say we are initializing a count called variable called count and we are initializing it to 0 so in the first iteration what we will do is like we will try to divide this number 999 by 10 if i if we divide 999 by 10 what is the output we should get 99.9 correct but now we need to get rid of this decimal part why so that we can get just 99 so what we will do is like we will use the javascript inbuilt function math.floor so math.floor will get rid of this decimal part we will use that math.floor of 99.9 which will give us 99 and at the same time what we will do is like we will increment the count to 1 basically what's happening is like this is gonna run in a loop and we will run the loop until this number is greater than 0 so at the first step we are saying number is equal to 999 by 10 which is a math plot floor so we get 99 again we divide 99 by 10 and we do a math plot floor now we get 9 and we also increment the count as 2 now number is still greater than 0 so we divide 9 by 10 again now we get 0 0.9 if we do a math plot floor we get 0 but at the same time we also increment the count as 3 but then now we again when we try to run this loop we have the number as 0 which means it's not greater than 0 so hence we get out of the loop and return the result what are we going to return we are going to return the count which in this case is 3 okay so this is the logic behind basically the logic is we divide by 10 and then floor it so that we get rid of the last digit in the number so as we do it each time we always get rid of this last digit in the number okay great so now let's try to write the code before i give you the solution please try to do it yourself okay so let's continue in the next video hey i hope 
you are able to solve this if you are not able to don't worry we will be solving in this video even if you have solved it just try to follow along so that uh, you will understand how you have done and what i am going to do i mean if you have done it uh, differently don't worry everything is fair and good but only thing is we need to be wary of what is the time complexity and space complexity great so let's start so as a first step i have opened this code in visual studio code and uh, it need not be like uh, you can do it on your uh, on any online editors like repl.it or even directly in the browser console so but i'm going to use visual studio code so that i can run this program uh, using node in the command line it's up to you to where you run this program okay so let me create a new file called 01 count digits dot js and i'm going to create a function named count digits and this is going to take the number as an input and now inside this what i will do is i'm going to initialize a variable called let number of digits and let's initialize it to zero now let me run a loop this loop will be running until the number is greater than zero and inside this while loop what i will do is i will really assign number to math dot floor of number divided by 10 so basically i'm dividing the number by 10 and doing a math dot floor of it so that we get rid of the last digit and at the same time i will also do number of digits plus plus so basically i'm trying to increment the number of digits so when, until this will run until the number is greater than zero so once it has become zero or less less most probably it will be zero right i'm just gonna return number of digits so now let's add some test cases so console dot log count digits of nine let's also add some more test cases I'm going to add 4 1. So, for test cases, 9 9, 9 9 9, 9 9 9, 4 nines. Okay. So, this should return 1, this should return 2, this should return 3, this should return 4. So, let's try running this code. So, node 0 1 count digits. Yep. As expected, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So basically the idea is like we divide the number and floor it so that we get rid of the last digit and at the same time we increment the number of digits. So for each iteration the number of digits get reduced by one uh, one length right. So if it's 999 in the next iteration it will be 99 in the next iteration it will be 9 and the next next iteration it will be 0. Okay. So this is the idea behind it. So what is the time complexity? You see the time complexity is like we run this loop until the number of digits gets reduced to zero so it's basically equivalent to length of the number of digits right or number of digits of a number so it is you can call it as it is theta of number of digits or big o of number of digits but for the sake of simplicity in this course let's use only big o so we will use uh, we will say the time complexity as big o of number of digits so num of digits and what is the space complexity space complexity here we are not using uh, anything much it's just that we are initializing this one variable so the space complexity is big o of one okay great so this is the solution hope you found it interesting thank you see you in the next one welcome back to the next problem this problem is going to be called is a number a palindrome basically first of all what is a palindrome let's take an example so for example take this input 363 as an example so here we have a number 363 if you reverse the number what do we get we get the same number 363 so basically a number which on reverse gives the same number are called palindrome okay for example take this number 763 if you reverse the number you get 367 correct which is not equal to 763 so hence we say number is not a palindrome and in a similar way if we just provide an input as just 8 which is a single digit number right on reverse of a single digit you get the same digit only so if the number is a single digit we just return true okay so basically if you reverse the number 
you should get the same number that's what a palindrome is great so how do we do this let's take a look at the conceptual overview so let's take example as 363 so as we know we need to reverse the number and then compare it to the input that is sure, uh, clear right but how do we reverse the number so in order to reverse the number what we will do is like we will get the last digit first you know we do from the right so in order to get the last digit which in this case is 3 we can use of this modulus operator for example if you do 363 3, modulus 10 what you will get so 10 goes 36 times right which means 36 360 so 10 into 36 360 so what is the reminder we get 3 so basically modulus operator is just returns as a reminder so when you do 363 percentage 10 you get 3 which is the last digit now we know we have the last digit but we need to reverse it how are we going to do that what we will do is like initially we are going to do we will set a number called reverse and initialize it to 0 okay and then we do reverse is equal to reverse into 10 so which means initially it is 0 so 0 into 10 plus last digit last digit last digit is 3 which means reverse becomes 3 great next we need to get rid of this 3 so what do we do if you remember the count digits problem the last problem we just divided by 10 and do a floor of it this symbol is for the floor actually okay so now once this condition is done we have this number 36 now since the number is greater than 0 we again will do num percentage 10 but this time the number is 36 so 36 percentage 10 is 10 see not not 10 sorry 6 so we have last digit as 6 now again we do reverse is equal to reverse into 10 so what is the reverse reverse is 3 if you remember so 3 into 10 is 30 30 plus 6 36 so now we have 36 okay and we again do 36 divided by 10 which is 3.6 take the flow you get 3 it's still greater than 0 so what do we do we again do num percentage 10 which is 3 percentage 10 3 percentage 10 is 3 and we do 36 into 10 right reverse is 36 so 36 into 10 which means we get 360 plus 3 which is 363 and now number becomes 0 now since the number is uh, 0 we get out of it and we have this reverse number which is 363 and we check whether the input is equal to this it is equal hence we return the value or boolean true okay so this is the expected output great i hope you understood the logic so please try to solve on your own in the next coding exercise and then we will look into the solution thank you welcome back to the solution video hopefully you are able to solve the problem in any case let's see how the solution works okay so let me create a new file 02 palindrome number.js i'm going to name this palindrome number.js okay and i'm going to create a function called is palindrome and let's receive the number as input and now i'm gonna uh, initialize a couple of variables first one is let reverse is equal to zero so this is the variable which is used to calculate the reverse value and also i'm going to create a temp variable and initialize it to the input number why is this required if you remember we need to compare the reverse number to the number so we can't directly modify this number right then we can't compare it with the past number so hence i'm copying the number to temp now what we can do is while this temp is not equal to zero until it is not equal to zero what we will do is like we will get the last digit first so const last digit is equal to temp percentage or modulus n so this will give us the last digit now let's calculate the reverse so reverse is equal to reverse multiplied by 10 if you remember so the idea behind this is that for example when you calculate this 3 right when you do multiply by 10 so initially the number is 0 so it will be multiplied with 
zero so we will get the last digit so when we come to the six we will get the tenth digit so we already have the ones digit so we are multiplying by 10 okay so now we will get the six three this one and when we again comes to this hundreds digit already we have six three so we multiplied by uh, i mean uh, we already have three six so we will multiply by 10 so we will get the hundreds digit so this is the idea so basically that's the idea behind multiplying by 10 okay so that's why we multiply by 10 at the same time we add the last digit cool now we should also reduce the temp right so we will uh, get rid of this last digit so temp is equal to we will use the same logic we used from count digits so math dot floor of temp divided by 10 great and once we are out of this while loop we will just return if reverse is equal to the input number so this will give us a boolean value so let's add some test cases so console.log is palindrome of 363 okay let me add a couple of more tests and 763 four five five four and let's say eight now if i try to run zero two you see we get first one is true yes second one is false yes that's correct four five five four is true yes and palindrome of eight is yes so true false true true this is how we solve this whether a number is palindrome or not thank you so here is the new problem we need to find the factorial of a number what is the factorial first of all so basically factorial is nothing but it is denoted by this number and then an exclamation which is equal to if example let's say a factorial of 4 what does that mean is like 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 if we say factorial of 5 so from 5 decrease the value by 1 and then multiply it each time so if the factorial of 5 is 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 so basically if you see now the expectation is that if i provide the input as 4 and the output should be 24 how is it 24 so it calls i mean the factorial of 4 is something but 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 right so 4 into 3 is 12 12 into 2 is 24 24 into 1 is 1 so it gets 24 similarly if you ask for a factorial of 5 the output is 120 right so i hope uh, you understood the, what is this factorial of a number and basically in order to solve this problem there are two ways one is iterative and other is recursive so what is iterative iterative, iterative is nothing but running through the loop itself There's something like a for loop or some loops recursive is also kind of a loop but the uh, the thing is in recursive method we will be calling a function from within itself so it calls a function from a function so it calls itself okay we will like uh, if it's confusing don't worry we will see in the solution video of how this works but basically the first challenge is to for you to write an iterative solution okay so basically we have a loop which has an iteration and we will have a result variable and we need to multiply that result with the iteration okay so this is the basic idea so try to solve this in the iteration approach in the coding exercise and we will see how the solution looks like thank you okay so here comes the first solution the iterative one so let's get into this file and let me create a new file 03 factorial.js okay and inside this i'm going to create a new function called factorial iterative just to mention that it is an iterative way of solving this problem and let's take the number as an in input now inside this what we will do is let's initialize the result variable to one and now we will just run a loop from let i is equal to two and until i is less than or equal to num and then i plus plus okay okay great so now, now inside this loop what we will do is like result is equal to result multiplied by i and at the end of the loop 
you will just return the result okay now let's add some test cases so console dot log of factorial iterator of four and let's add couple of more so probably five six and seven so now let's try running this node 03 factorial dot js you see yeah we get 24 for 4 factorial and 120 for 5 factorial 6 factorial is 720 and 7 factorial is 50 40 or 5040 great so now we have the solution so basically if we initialize the result as 1 why are we initializing it as 1 and not 0 if you're initializing it as 0 then if you try to multiply it from let's say from i is equal to 0 or 1 whatever you multiplied with 0 it will be 0 so hence we uh, initialize the result as 1 and we starting the loop from 2 and why not uh, 1 the reason is that 1 into 1 is always going to be 1 right so that's the reason we are trying to start from 2 so we will get 1 into 2 right so that's the reason why we have result as 1 and let i is equal to 2 as the initial starting point for the loop great and what is the time complexity and space complexity the time complexity if you see it is running until the number becomes zero right so it's basically big o of n times n times so we are running n times the loop is being run n times so what is the space complexity apart from this result we are we don't take any space at all so it's big o of one great so in the next video we will see how to solve the same problem using recursive approach and to be frank Iterative, iterative approach is much better or much performant than recursive approach but still for the sake of an alternative approach we will do the same as well okay and please try to solve it on your own through a recursive approach as well so basically in the recursive approach you will be for example let's say we have a factorial function you will just call the function within itself by something like n plus n multiplied by sorry factorial of n minus 1 just try and think about the base case alone when we should return if it's not something you're aware of don't worry please look at the solution video okay thank you see you in the next one so in the last video we saw how to solve it iteratively in this video let's try to solve it recursively it's going to be really simple but you know like sometimes people have this uh, difficulty in understanding recursion but the core logic is really simple i will try to explain as much as i could okay so let's create a new function and this time i'm going to name it as rather than iterative i'm going to call it as factorial underscore recursive and let's say we also receive the number now what we will do is like if you remember factorial is nothing but it calls itself so at the end we will just return num multiplied by factorial recursive of num minus one so what will happen we will say let's say i am passing four this time it will call four into factorial recursive of num minus one is three so this in turn will come and call 3 into factorial recursive of 2 which will again call 2 into factorial recursive of 1 which will again call 1 into factorial recursive of 0 which will again call 0 into factorial recursive of minus 1 so you see it keeps on going so what do we need here we need to have a base condition so that we can stop it else this will just keep on running and at the end you will get maximum call stack size exceeded error so in order to prevent that we need to have a base condition this base condition is where the recursion call stack ends so for this step what we will do is like we will say if number is equal to 1 whenever the number becomes equal to 1 we will just return 1 okay to be frank that's all the solution is all about let's try running this so rather than iterative let me change it to recursive okay so let's try running this program again cool you see we are getting the same factorial 24 120 720 50 40 
but there is a problem with this approach what it is i am complexity wise it also takes we go off and there is no change in that but as per space complexity this takes we go off and as well why is that here if you see we are calling functions within functions so it will add to the call stack let me show it in the diagram so that it is more clear so basically if you see let's take this example of calculating the factorial of 4 factorial of 4 will call 4 into factorial of 3 and this will call 3 into factorial of 2 and this in turn will call 2 into factorial of 1 if you see these functions are all present in the call stack only when the base condition is written in this case for example fact of 1 is going to return 1 so 2 into 1 is being returned to its parent and then 2 into 3 6 is returned to its parent and now we have 6 into 4 which is 24 and it returns, it returns to the parent so if you see only when we meet the base condition then the call stack is rewind or unwinded right it gets back one by one so hence this takes some memory or space as well and if you see it takes one two three four so it's kind of like equivalent to actually n plus one as well but uh, in general it takes big o of n times that is equivalent to the number so hence we say time complexity and space complexity is big o of n one important thing to notice that you shouldn't forget this base condition in any of the recursive functions okay cool i hope you understood this uh, recursive approach so see you in another video welcome back in this video we will talk about this problem called trailing zeros in a factorial so what do i mean by trailing zeros in a factorial let's take the example of this input 5 so which means we will first calculate the factorial of 5 factorial of 5 is nothing but 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 which gives 120 and if you see in this 120 as a trailing zero which is zeros at the end we have one trailing zero and hence the output is one in a similar way for the input 10 you will have two trailing zeros and for the input 4 there are no zeros right because 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 24 it doesn't have any zeros so hence the output is zero and for input 100 we have output as 24 so it has 24 trailing zeros got it now that we know what we need to calculate let's look at a naive solution first so i have opened the code so let me create a new file so 04 trailing zeros okay trailing zeros dot chase so let's create a function trailing zeros and this takes the num as an input and now what we need to do first as i said first we need to calculate the factorial so let fact for factorial is equal to let's copy this factorial function from the older code which we wrote in the previous lectures so i'm gonna rename it to just factorial and now we have this function to calculate the factorial right so let's just call factorial of now so now that we have calculated the factorial let's calculate the trailing zeros so for that first let me initialize the result variable to zero and after that what we will do is like while fact modulus 10 is equal to zero so until the fact modulus 10 is equal to zero we will do result plus plus and then fact is equal to math dot floor of fact divided by 10 the same logic what we did for counting the digits what we are basically doing is like now we have this factorial of a number and now we check whether this factorial is modulus when we do a factorial modulus 10 whether the remainder is zero if that is the case then we know we have a trailing zero so we add to this result plus plus and then we remove the last digit which we do by math dot floor of fact by 
10 again it will check for fact modulus 10 whether it is equal to 0 if it's not the case then it will come out of that loop so at the end what we need to do we just need to return the result so let's try to add some test cases so console dot log trailing zeros of 4 okay let's add couple more we know for 4 there is uh, 0 and let's add it for 5 as well okay and if you remember yeah for uh, 5 there should be 1 and for 10 there should be 2 right so let's add 10 as well great now let's try running this program so node 0 4 trailing zeros dot js you see we get the right output trailing zeros of 4 is 0 trailing zeros of 5 is 1 and trailing zeros of 10 is 2 okay harish but you usually give me an exercise why didn't give you give me an exercise the reason being that there is a big problem with this approach and hence i would like you to think of a better approach before that let me explain what is the problem with this approach so if you remember when we pass the number as 100 we are expecting the output to be 24 right let's see what happens so i will console dot lock so 100 and now if you try to run it says zero that's interesting what's going on this is actually due to a problem called integer overflow so basically a number can hold on until only i mean it can hold only until a certain value beyond which it is too much right and basically here what's happening is like if you check out maybe i can run it and let's see what is the factorial value so console dot log of fact for trailing zeros of 100 okay you see it says 1.93 to some num digits e power plus 157 it does give some kind of approximate notation but ideally what happens is like this doesn't take into account of trailing zeros hence we have this issue so the all the what i'm trying to say is like this issue is caused by some kind of integer overflows so because it couldn't hold that kind of number hence this program is not suitable for very large numbers okay so how do we solve now then Okay, here's where we make use of some interesting facts about this factorials. Let's see what those are about. Okay, so let's see what 5 factorial is. We know 5 factorial is 1 times, 2 times, 3 times, 4 times, 5, which is equal to 120. And one interesting fact about this factorial is that when do we get 10? If you multiply 2 and 5, correct? Now, if you see here, there is one two and there is one five, and there is one trailing zero. Can you correlate now? So basically, what is the correlation is that if you can find the number of twos and fives, then we know number of trailing zeros. This is the correlation. So here we have one two and one five, and hence there is one trailing zero. If there are multiple twos and fives, or let's say like there, there are like three twos. And there are three fives then we know there are three trailing zeros this is the fact that we are trying to use but we can even simplify more because in the factorial five always occurs less than two right because it's the smaller one so five is always the limiting factor so you just need to take account of five that's all nothing else but you need to be wary of one thing for example in the case of 5 factorial if you see it's 120 so we say there is 1 5 correct but what is the case for let's assume we are calculating something like uh, 25 factorial okay so it goes from uh, 1 into 2 into 3 into 4 into 5 into dot 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 till 25 correct but now we also know that 5 occurs during you know like something like 5 10 15 right but then when it comes to 25 right 
it is actually 5 into 5 that's interesting so here if you divide it by n if you divide the n by 5 we have calculated the number of fives okay but then when you compare this 25 it also has one additional 5 so what we do we again do a n divided by 25 and then if the number is still greater for example let's take the case of uh, 251 okay what we will do is like we will do 251 divided by 5 great we will get the number of fives and then we will also see we will do 5 into 5 which is 25 right 25 is still lesser than 251 so we will divide 251 divided by 25 now we will get the extra fives which were missed out but next case again multiply it by 5 125 if you see it contains three fives so now what we will do is like 125 is still smaller than 251 so 251 divided by 125 and then we will take a floor out of it now if you multiply 125 by 5 it is definitely bigger than 251 so we get the summation of n by 5 plus n by 25 plus n by 125 so we do this loop until this whatever this factor of 5 is greater than the number whatever is passed so what is the big advantage of this of this approach we don't even calculate the factorial but we still get the number of fives and hence we know how many trailing zeros are present okay so now that you have this idea try to solve it in the coding exercise using this idea because the older idea will not work for higher inputs okay so try to solve using this idea whatever i have said now and let's uh, meet in the solution video thank you welcome to this solution video in this video let's see how to make use of the facts of the factorial which we saw in the last video and solve this problem great so now for the purpose of reference let me comment this out and yeah, let me uncommon these test cases so we will create a new function called trailing zeros which takes num as an input okay now we have the empty function now what we will do is like as usual we will create the result variable and initialize it to zero now we will loop so now what's the condition is that for let i is equal to 5 so we are starting with 5 okay until i is less than or equal to num and now here is the important condition what we will do is like we will not just do i plus plus but whereas we will do i is equal to i multiplied by 5 okay and now inside this what we will do is we will do result plus equal to math dot floor of num divided by i and at the end we will just return result not to be frank that's all the solution is about before explaining in detail let's try to run this program you see as per the expectation we should get for uh, input of 100 we should get 24 trailing zeros for 100 we have this 24 trailing zeros now it seems like the solution is working and this solution will work even for big numbers so what is happening as i said basically we are trying to divide it by multiples of fives so initially we are starting with five and we are going till whether until equal to number and for each iteration we are multiplying it by five which means at first we do a math dot floor of num divided by i and get the multiples of five and then when we do divided and then we multiply i by five right which means now i becomes 25 now when we do by 25 we will get the extra missed out fives because 5 25 has power of 2 right so we are missing one 5 so we also gotten gotten that into account and now again it will multiply by 5 which means now i becomes 125 125 is like 5 into 5 into 5 we have calculated 5 into 5 but we are missing three fives are in a row so that's why we make use of this method floor of num divided by 125 
so this keeps on running until the uh, power of phi becomes less than or equal to or greater than now okay that's what is happening so this is the solution behind this but then what is the time complexity of this approach basically what we are doing is like we are doing something like phi power k times right which is like 5 into 5 into 5 until and it has become less than or equal to n this is very much if you take the very much equivalent to when we take a log something like log base 5 n and hence we say the time complexity of this approach is big o of log n and the space complexity we don't have nothing much apart from this result so the space complexity is big o of 1 okay so i hope you understood the problem to recap basically when we do 5 right 5 where and all it comes it comes at 5 10 15 20 25 correct so now whenever we divide it by 5 we will get the number of fives but the problem is if you see the 25 it also has one more 5 we only calculated one 5 that's why we divide again by 25 to calculate the left out fives same thing for 125 i hope you got this logic so that's it about this uh, trailing zeros see you in the next one welcome back in this video we will talk about the problem of finding a gcd or hcf of a number what is gcd or hcf it stands for greatest common divisor or highest common factor so let's see what that is about basically if the input is a is equal to 4 and b is equal to 6 what is the highest divisor that divides both of them so in the case of 4 and 6 right of course one divides a as well as b but the question is highest one how about two it divides both a and b how about three no how about four yes it divides a but it doesn't divide six so it can go until the minimum of a and b and whatever divides highest is the highest common divisor in this case it is two okay so let's take another example a is equal to 200 and b is equal to 400 the minimum of this both is 200 and if you try to divide a by 200 it will give one yeah it divides similarly b is divisible by 200 so the output is 200 for 9 and 10 only one divides both of them if you try with 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 nothing divides both of them and hence the output is 1 so basically if you provide any numbers that is a positive definitely one is one of the greatest common devices but is it the greatest that we need to figure it out okay okay cool so now that you have an idea of what this gcd is about let's try to solve this using a naive solution what is the expectation of this naive solution you have a function gcd and let's say we pass a and b some let's say to any two numbers now the idea is that you will find the minimum of these two numbers why are we finding the minimum of these two numbers highest gcd can be minimum of these two right it can't be like for example in the case of four and six it can't be six it can be only four so you can start from the minimum of a and b and then you can uh, decrement it and go till one so whenever you find the highest one you just return it okay great so this is the idea so please try to solve this in the coding exercise following and if you already know the uh, optimized solution take it as an exercise and try to solve it okay so we will see in the solution video thank you okay welcome back hope you are able to solve the problem in any case let's go to the solution video wait so let me create a new file so 05 gcd dot js now let's create this function called gcd and let's have two arguments a and a b okay now as a first step let's get the minimum value so let result is equal to how can we get the minimum of a and b we can use the inbuilt math dot min function so a comma b now we have the minimum 
so we can run a loop while result is greater than one because when we have the one we should return it because that's the least gcd right so whenever the result is greater than one we say if a modulus result is equal to zero and b modulus result is equal to zero then what we will do we will just return the result if not we will do result minus minus and then at the end we will just return the result got it so that's all the program is all about so if you pass four and uh, six minimum is four so it will start with four four is greater than one whether uh, four uh, a which is four percentage four is equal to zero yes but six percentage four is not equal to zero so it decrements it won't work for uh, three but when it comes to two you know like this both conditions are met and hence we return the result got it so let's add some test conditions so console.log gcd of four comma six so let me copy this line and paste it a couple of more times second test case is 200 400 which should give us 200 and then 9 and a 10 this should give us 1 let's try running this so node 0 5 yep as you see you get output as 2 which is the expected one 200 and then 1 cool so this is the knife solution the next video you will see in better solution thank you welcome back let's talk about the better solution this better solution is based on a mathematical approach or algorithm called euclidean algorithm so what does this algorithm say let's understand let's assume for a and b a is greater than b okay now whenever b divides a then we know definitely gcd is b right for example in the case of uh, 200 and 400 it assume like uh, b is 200 and uh, yeah b is 200 and a is 400 in that case b is dividing a which means then gcd is b which is 200 correct this is straightforward case but we are interested in the case where this is not true so what will happen in that case then a will be equal to q times b plus r what is that q times b plus r harish you are confusing me with this equation a we all know okay okay let's take the example of 400 and 200 so now 400 is equal to okay maybe the better example would be like uh, let's take the example of 4 and 6 okay so in this case a is 6 and b is 4 so 6 is equal to how many times b can divide a it's one times right so q is nothing but quotient so one times b which is then says 4 plus reminder so what is the reminder reminder is 2 right so because whenever you divide 6 by 4 it goes one times which is the quotient and the reminder is 2 so that's what this equation is all about now from this equation what we can do is like we can get the reminder by doing a minus qb we just send this qb to the left hand side okay this is nothing different now for example let's say there is a common divisor for a and b something called d then we can take d as a common and it will be something like a by d minus qb by d right so d is a common divisor for a and b but what euclidean algorithm says is that if it is common for a and b this divisor then this d is also a divisor of r reminder okay so this is all about euclidean algorithm which means what we can do is like whenever you are trying to find a comma b we can just say gcd of b comma r so we just pass b and then the reminder because reminder is also a divisor so by this way what we are doing is like we are drastically reducing the 
one of the values right so it tries to reduce it to zero we are trying to reducing it to zero so probably i think this might be a little confusing but this is the mathematical proof but uh, let's see how this works in code but if you understood please try to solve this program on your own in the coding exercise also to explain better why this is holding true a comma b is equal to b comma r is for example let's take the example of gcd of 4 comma 6 itself okay so 4 comma 6 now i also said like this reminder is also a divisor correct which means we are trying to there is no need for this greater value right so we can just reduce it by calling we will just pass the i mean in this case it's 6 comma 4 sorry 6 comma 4 okay then we will just pass 4 and then we will do a percentage b which in this case is 6 percentage 4 which is 2 okay now when you try to do this again you will pass b and then you will do a percentage b which this time will give you zero when this gets to zero you just return this value this is the gcd that's all so basically from a b and r we're just trying to choose the two minimum values that's to be precise or concise because a is 6 b is 4 we just need the gcd of b and reminder so we are just trying to reduce it and reduce it until it gets to zero and one value which is like a will not be zero which is the gcd in our case okay hope this helps try to solve it on your own and we will see in the solution video thank you welcome back to this solution video so let's see how to solve this using euclidean approach i'm going to show you two solutions one is using recursive approach and another is using iterative approach okay so let's start before starting you know like the time complexity of this solution is theta of min of a comma b okay whatever is minimum and then it happens min times of a or b great anyway so let's start with this another function gcd underscore euc for euclidean and then um, we will pass a and b okay now if you know what this euclidean from the last video what we need to do we will just need to do return gcd underscore euc of okay you will just pass b and then we need to take the reminder right so a percentage b but this is just not enough because we need a base case when we are doing a recursive function so what we will do is like if if you remember always the b becomes zero so b when it whenever it is equal to zero we will just return a which is the gcd okay so let's try to copy this and i just let's rename this and probably i will comment this out so that it is clear so let's try to run again you see the output is the same so in order to give you a clear picture of what's going on so let's say we are doing a gcd of 10 comma 15 okay i have already said i have always said that a has to be greater than b for this uh, in the overview video of this solution but it doesn't matter actually why is that whenever you do something like see here in this case b is greater 10 comma 15 what are we going to do in this case we're just going to do b comma a percentage b so which means b is 15 and then you will do a a modulus b which is 10 percentage 15 which will give 10 so it itself reverses it rather than you reversing it it itself uh, reverses it and hence you need not worry about it okay so it reverses it now the next condition is you will give the b and then 15 percentage 10 which is 5 and then 5 10 percentage 5 is 0 correct so now the b has become 0 we just return the a which is the gcd so this is how the solution works great now that uh, you have seen this uh, recursive approach the time complexity of this is log of minimum of a or b so basically it's actually logarithmic solution log of minimum of a comma b okay but the problem with this recursive approach is that it also takes the space of log of min of a comma b so 
let's try to write an iterative solution which will take less space than recursive one so let's try to do that so function gcd underscore euc for euclidean and let's say itr for iterative and then i will pass a and b and now inside this we will do while b is not equal to zero you know until this b becomes zero we will do a is equal to a percentage b we're just trying to do whatever we have done in the recursive to iterate okay and now we have reduced the value of a but then we need to swap those so how can we swap those we can use this latest features of javascript so a comma b is equal to b comma a so now b becomes a and a becomes b okay now this will run until b becomes zero so at the end we will just return a which is our gcd so let's try to run this using these test cases so let me change the function names okay if i try to run this now it gives us the same output okay so now you see this is the recursive way and this is the iterative way the advantage with this iterative way is that it takes constant space or order of one space or big o of one space but the time complexity remains the same which is log of min of a comma b okay great how it is log of min of a comma b is outside the scope because it involves uh, certain mathematical things but in turn if you see this value gets drastically reduced right so it's something like dividing by two so that's why we say it's a logarithmic great so see you in the next one welcome to this new problem in this problem we will see how to solve or get an lcm of a pair of numbers so let's take some examples to see what is about lcm lcm stands for least common multiple okay so let's take this three and seven as an example let's say we have two numbers three and seven okay so what is the common multiple for three and seven so you see seven into one is seven so i do three into one three three into two six three into three nine okay it doesn't match so seven into two is 14 so three into four is 12 three into five is 15 again it doesn't match so let's do seven into three which is 21 now three into six is 18 and three into seven is 21 you see we have this 21 common in both 3 and 7 which is the least one from whenever we try to multiply it from 1 right so this is what is known as least common multiple so so the least common multiple of 3 and 7 is 21 and it is also known as co primes because both are uh, prime numbers so if a number both both the numbers are prime numbers if you just multiply the prime numbers then we get the lcm of those prime numbers those are called as co primes great so now let's see another examples for example in the case of 4 and 6 what is the least common multiple for 6 if you add one more 6 it is 12 and 4 into 3 is 12 so 12 is the least multiple and for 3 and 4 it is going to be 12 right because 3 times 2 is 6 4 times 2 is 8 4 times 3 is 12 3 times 4 is 12 so 12 is the least common multiple and for 2 and 8 you see 2 into 4 is 8 so 8 is the least common multiple and for 3 and 7 we have already seen okay so let's make use of this fact and uh, let's go for a naive solution first how do we go about this naive solution see it's kind of like an opposite of what we did in gcd right so here the least common multiple cannot be smaller than smaller than the maximum of two numbers so in this case what you need to do is like get the maximum of two numbers for example in the case of 3 and 7 maximum of 3 and 7 is 7 and then increment the number 1 by 1 you know like just increment by plus plus until you meet a common multiple that is divisible by both a and b okay so i have given you a clue please try to solve it on your own in the coding exercise and uh, we will meet you in the solution video thank you okay welcome back let's try to solve in a naive way so let me create a new file 06 lcm.js okay now let me create a function lcm 
and this is going to take two variables a and b both are numbers and now inside this what you can do is we have to find the maximum first right so let result is equal to math dot max of a comma b so now that we have the maximum or maximum number which might be a possible result now let's do an infinite loop so while of true inside this loop first we will check whether result modulus a is equal to zero and then result modulus b is equal to zero if that is the case we will just return the result if not we will increment the result by one and then we will try to continue so that's all guys to be frank that's all the program is so let's try to add some test cases so lcm so maybe i will just copy a couple more times so let's add test cases for four and six which should give us 12 and two comma eight which should give us eight and three comma seven which should give us 21 okay cool so node zero six lcm.js yep as expected we are getting the result great okay so what is the time complexity of this solution if you see it starts from max and the maximum it can go is a into b which kind of like the time complexity is like big big go of a times b minus max okay so this is the approximate uh, time complexity and as for space complexity we are not using any space which uh, it's just a constant variable one variable so you can take it as space complexity as big o of one great so now that uh, we have this uh, naive solution the next video you have a overview to see an efficient solution so let's continue in the next video so what is the better solution going to be the better solution is based on another mathematical proof so basically if you have studied high school mathematics right you might have known this formula but even if you don't know don't worry but the basic idea is that if you multiply a and b it is also equal to gcd of a and b multiplied by lcm of a and b okay so basically if you multiply gcd and lcm of a number a comma b then you get the multiplication a into b with this now we can figure out the LCM by moving this GCD towards the left hand side. So LCM of A comma B is equal to A times B divided by GCD of A comma B. Now we already know how to calculate GCD based on the previous lectures. So it takes logarithmic time complexity. So once we know the GCD, it's as simple as doing a constant mathematical operation to calculate the LCM of A comma B so the overall time complexity it's going to take is the time complexity of gcd okay so i hope i have given you a clear indication of how to go about this uh, solution in the next coding exercise please try to solve it on your own and i will see you in the solution video thank you okay welcome back guys so let's try to do the efficient way so let me create a new function lcm underscore better i'm just naming it you know some name and a comma b now we just need to return if you remember from the uh, formula a times b divided by gcd right so i will do a multiplied by b divided by gcd of a comma b that's all and uh, let's try to add the, the same test cases at this time with lcm better but if you see we need to have a definition for gcd so let's go to gcd.js and maybe probably we will use this iterate to solution okay because this is the efficient one right so let me copy that and just change it to gcd now we have this gcd functionality which will give us the gcd in logarithmic time and uh, yeah we have this fun, uh, formula put up as well so let's try to run so node lcm you see we are getting the same output it's as simple as this but 
if you are not sure about how this dcd function works please again take a look on the gcd video okay so overall this solution works in a logarithmic time so logarithm log of min of a comma p right basically yeah and if th there is no space complexity it's just big o of one because here we are using an iterator gcd great cool so that's it for the solution see you in the next one welcome back to the another problem in this problem we are going to check whether a number is a prime number or not first of all what is a prime number a number is a prime if it does not have any divisors apart from the number itself and one okay so for example if you see here these are some of the prime numbers 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 because apart from the number itself and number one they don't have any divisors at all and one special prime number here is the two because it's the only even prime number and please note that one is not a prime number okay so prime number starts from two okay cool so let's see some of the examples of uh, what is the expectation and what is the output so if we pass 13 then 13 is a uh, prime number so we say output as true if it's 16 we know 16 is divisible by 2 and 4 as well as 8 so we say it is false if it's 101 then it's a prime number so we return true okay so first let's let me give you a clue on how to solve it uh, naively we can uh, try it in the coding exercise and then we will talk about the solution basically you just need to loop from 2 till number whatever the number minus 1 and then check whether it is divisible or not okay so that's all i can give the clue i hope you understood what you need to do because i think it should be straightforward so let's see in the solution video thank you okay hey, welcome back to the naive solution so let's start so let me create a new file first 07 prime dot js let me create a function called is prime and let us take the number as an argument now we will start to look from two but one is also a not a prime number right so we will have an explicit condition for one so if num is equal to one then we will just say return false now what we will do is like we will start the loop from i is equal to 2 and it will run until i is less than num and then i plus plus now inside this loop what we will do is like we will just see whether the num is divisible by the iterator or i if num percentage i is equal to z zero then we know the number is divisible which means it's not a prime number so we will just return false that's all for all other cases if we are getting out of this loop then we know we have a prime number so we will just return true okay so let's add some test cases i'll just copy and paste i don't want to waste your time as well so yeah so these are the test cases if you see is prime of 1 is prime of 101 is prime of 2 is prime of 13 and is prime of 50 so to recap we're running the loop from 2 till number minus 1 and whenever the number percentage i or whenever a number is divisible by this i then we just return false so ideally this should give us false and i think 101 is a prime 2 is a prime 13 is a prime so false true 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 false let's see so node 07 prime.js yes as expected false true 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 false great so we have the naive solution in the next video we will talk about the better approach okay welcome back this is going to be our first better approach yes there is one more better approach than the current one but in any case let's see if you remember the last solution the time complexity is big o of n and the space complexity is big o of one but if you know let's take the example of square root of nine okay so you know like if you want to just let's assume you want to find the square root of nine the possible values are from one to nine right but we can just like that make it easier uh, by 
for example what is the square root of 9 we know 3 okay but the idea here is that a numbers above 3 can't be a square root of 9 right because if they do something like example 3.1 square it is going to be greater than 9 okay so the maximum it can go is 3 so we are going to make use of this similar idea okay the thing is if you see divisors always appears in pairs so if it's 30 right it could be 1 comma 30 or that means 1 into 30 or 2 into 15 3 into 10 or 5 into 6 similarly for 25 it's 1 into 25 and 5 into 5 so basically what this says is that if we take this this x into y is equal to n which means 2 into 15 is equal to 30 or 3 into 10 is equal to 30 correct but here we are going to make use of this similar logic so how we are going to make use is that let's assume that x is less than or equal to y okay now we can say that x into x is going to be less than or equal to n right less than or equal to n if it is equal to y then it will at most go till n but for other cases it will be definitely less than n which means we can say x is going to be less than square root of n okay so now what i am trying to say is that rather than looping from 2 to n minus 1 and checking for divisibility it is enough mathematically to check for the looping i mean check for numbers 2 till square root of n okay so rather than n minus 1 we are going to check till square root of n by this way what's happening is like we are getting the time complexity of big o of square root of n which is far better than the big o of n right because always n power 1 by 2 is less than n and space complexity why this is time complexity space complexity is as usual big o of 1 okay so you got the idea we just need to loop from 2 till square root of n so take this idea and try to solve the coding exercise let's meet us again in the solution video thank you okay let's get back to the solution so let me create a new function so function is prime 2 and let's take the num as well and as usual we will check for one so if num is equal to one then let's return false if not we will loop through so i will just copy this so we're just trying to loop but where is the optimization here is where so rather than i less than num we will check i times i is less than or equal to num so this is the optimization so now we have big o of square root of n time complexity you need not change anything so let's try to see how this test cases work out so we need to get false true to true false so let me save this and try to run again yes as expected we are getting false true 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 false right so you see that's one small change and we have made from big o of n to big o of square root of n great so see you in the next one welcome back guys so this is going to be the next better solution so the idea here is that we are going to have the similar time complexity but we are going to reduce the number of operations how are we going to do that let me give you the clue what we will do is like at first okay we know one is uh, not a prime number okay let's uh, leave that now as a first step for whatever the number we passed we check whether the number is divisible by 2 okay so if we check from this list if the number is divisible by 2 we can ignore a whole lot nearly 50 percent numbers right because 2 is almost divisible one character ahead so one number ahead so let's say we are checking for whether a number is divisible by 2 so we can get rid of 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 16 18 20 okay let me change the color so that it is more clear yeah okay so now let's assume 
after checking for divisibility by 2 we also check for divisibility by 3 so 3 will be gone 6 is already gone 9 is gone 12 is already gone 15 is gone 18 is as well and then 21 and it goes on so now after doing this if you just check right we have almost eliminated most of the things so what we have now is 5 7 11 12 13, 17, 19. Could you get any pattern out of this? So let me give you the pattern. What we are going to do now is like, since we are checking initially for the divisibility by 2 and 3, and we will also check whether a number is given a 1, and then if it's 1, we say we will just return false. So this time we are going to loop from 5 till the, as usual, i into i less than or equal to n. But what is the catch here is that rather than incrementing the numbers by one this time so after five what we will do is like we will increment it by six because when we increment it by six here we are we will get by 11 from 11 we again will increment by six which means we will get 17 but then you might ask Arish we are missing the number 7 we are not checking for that and we are not looking for 13 as well as 19 but do you see a correlation between this 5 and 7 11 and 13 17 and 19 yes you see if it it is two steps ahead right so there is one place back and behind and then the next place so it is kind of like plus 2 so what we will do is like when we are checking inside this loop for 5 we will also check for plus 2 as well same thing here so plus 2 which is 13 so from 17 plus 2 19 okay so rest of the logic remains the same as what we did for square root efficient implementation okay so on to be said this solution works nearly three times faster than the square root solution okay so now i have given you the idea behind how to solve this so try to solve in the coding exercise and we will meet again in the solution video thank you okay now let's see how the most efficient solution works let me create another function so function is prime third time yeah <laughs> this is the last time guys don't worry so now as usual we will check whether number is equal to one if that is the case we will just return false but additionally now what we are going to do is like we are just going to check whether number is equal to 2 or whether number is equal to 3 if that is the case then we will just return true because these are prime numbers but why do we need to check for this the reason being that we are going to start the loop from 5 so let i is equal to 5 hence we don't have the opportunity to check for 2 and 3 hence we are checking explicitly now you will also do i times i is less than or equal to num and here is the important condition we will be doing i is equal to i plus 6 okay now inside this what we will do is like we will check if num percentage i is equal to 0 or if you remember the second portion plus 2 here is where we are going to check num percentage i plus 2 is going to be equal to 0 then we know it's not a prime so we will just return false okay great and one more thing we also need to check whether if num percentage 2 is equal to 0 or num percentage 3 is equal to 0 if that is the case we will just return false this is also a check which we need to add explicitly because here we are not going to check for 2 and 3 okay if you remember we said we will be checking checking this explicitly so that's the reason i'm adding this condition hence since we are adding this condition we also need to add this definitely else we can't uh, check for numbers equal to 2 and 3 great so now for all other case if you are here we know we have a prime number so we will just return true great so now let's see how the test cases uh, fan out so prime 3 prime 3 prime 3 prime 3 prime 3 let's try running this 
yes as expected we get false true 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 false so that's all guys i hope you understand and this solution works nearly three times better as i said okay great so see you in the next problem hello welcome to this new problem this problem is about prime factors of a number what is prime factors of a number for example let's take the case of a 12 prime factors are nothing but the factors of this number that are prime which means in this case if you see 12 that is equal to 2 power 2 into 3 why is that because 2 is a prime number 3 is a prime number and 2 goes 2 times so 2 into 2 and then it is into 3 goes 1 times so if you multiply 2 into 2 into 3 we get 12 so this is what prime factors are all about i mean if you see 4 also is divisible by 12 right 4 also goes or divides 12 but since it is not a prime number we are not taking into account okay so we take only prime factors so what are we trying to do if we pass input as 12 then we are expecting an array that should give us 2 2 3 and if it's 13 there are no prime factors so we just return the number itself if it's 315 then we will return 3 3 5 7 if you multiply 3 into 3 into 5 into 7 we will get 315 okay so this is the expectation so try to think around this and uh, in the coding exercise try to solve the problem uh, here as well we are going to solve three times so there are like three different approaches so the first approach name approach is going to be like something like uh, we will be looping from uh, number two till n minus one and inside this loop we will be checking whether uh, each number is a prime if the number is prime then inside that we have another nested loop that will do that will check whether this number is divisible by this uh, prime number and if it is divisible then we increase the power of this prime number for example if it is 2 then we multiply 2 by 2 4 so we check whether the number is divisible by 4 if it is again divisible if divisible by 4 we again multiply it by 2 which means we again check whether the number is divisible by 8 okay and then we carry on got it so that's for time and by increasing the power so this is the basic idea on how to solve this so try to solve it on your own and we will see in the solution video okay welcome back to the first naive solution first of all let me create a new file so 08 prime underscore factors.js and let me create a function called prime factors and this is going to take a num as an argument and uh, inside this if you remember we need to send out an array of uh, factors right so let me create a variable called uh, output and assign it to an empty array and the next base check is that if the number is less than or equal to one then we will just return the output itself which is an empty array because for a number which is less than or equal to one we don't have any prime factors great next we will start the loop so let i is equal to so we start from uh, 2 and then it goes till num minus 1 and then i plus plus inside this what we can do is like we will check first whether a number or the i i i mean the number i is a prime or not so this prime of i so you see we need to have a function called this prime so what we can do is like we can copy from the previous uh, lecture so let's take that and uh, let me paste it over here so this function will uh, say whether the number is prime or not okay so now whenever a number is prime what i will do is like let me create a temporary variable called x and assign this i you will understand why i'm doing this shortly okay next case is i'm going to check while num percentage x is equal to zero so until this num percentage x which is initially two is equal to zero that is if the number is divisible by x then we say output dot push of i okay and then what we will do is like we will assign x is equal to x times i so we basically we multiply example if it is two we multiply two into two four next time when it comes four into two eight so you just multiply or increase the power of that prime number until this number is divisible okay great so now when we are coming out of this loop so we will get coming out of this for loop at the end you will just return the output okay so that's all actually
so when initially when uh, two comes this will check whether it is a prime it is a prime so it will uh, get all the powers of it and we will be pushing how many times whether it is divisible and next it will go for three and uh, four when it comes to four it is not a prime number so it will not go inside this loop okay great so let's add some test cases as well so console dot log of prime factors of 12 and let me copy uh, three more times and this time 13 315 and then one okay cool now let's try running this so node 08 you see the first one is 223 3357 empty empty yep this is providing the expected output great so what is the time complexity of this solution the time complexity is that if you see this is trying to run almost n times and is prime is actually running if you remember square root of n right so n power 1 by 2 times and inside that we have a logarithmic operation because like dividing and then you know whenever you multiply it it's kind of like a power operation so it's kind of like logarithmic operation so overall the time complexity is like n power 3 by 2 log n times okay great and as for the space requirement if you are just printing the space requirement would have been like uh, big o of one but in this case it is equal to the number of prime factors okay so big o of prime factors is the space requirement okay cool so see you in the next efficient solution thank you hello welcome back so this solution is going to be based on the fact that composite com numbers come later that is prime numbers come first and then comes the composite numbers and also when using this approach there is no need to use or check for is prime okay so this efficient method let's see how that works so efficient approach okay so basically i will give you a clue as to what has to be done first so for example let's say we are looking for the prime factors of number 450 okay so initially our i is at 2 okay let's say and also output array is empty now we will check whether i is equal to 2 which is a prime number is divisible or prime factor of 450 it is a prime factor right because it is divisible so now what we will do is like output becomes and then we will divide 450 divided by 2 which is 2 and then 225 okay this becomes 225 now again we will loop whether 225 is divisible by 2 it is not the case so now what we will do we will change i is equal to 3 remember now output is 2 now what we will do is we will see whether 225 is divisible by 3 it is indeed divisible right it goes 75 times so the output becomes 2 comma 3 okay and we will again check whether this number is divisible by 3 yeah it is again divisible by say 3 so now the output becomes 2 3 3 okay and 75 divided by 3 is 2 and then we will have 5 so 25 now 25 is not divisible by 3 so i becomes 4 if you see if you remember i said we will not be checking for is prime right so now but automatically what happens is that because of the fact that composite no, composite numbers comes later this number whatever we have is not going to be divisible by this composite number and hence we will ignore this step and now when we come to i is equal to 5 it is indeed divisible so we will add 2 3 3 5 and 25 divided by 5 is equal to 5 got it and again we will be dividing it by 5 so it's sign of like 2 into 3 square into 5 square got it so this is how the solution looks like so 25 into 2 which is 50 and 50 into 9 is 450 
okay great so this is how the solution works like works so let's see how to solve this using the programming language well, let's see how to do this in javascript so basically inside this i'm going to create a another function called prime factors and let's name it as prime factors 2 okay and then we'll get the number and as usual let's get ready this output array so output is equal to empty array and we will also do the similar check like if number is less than or equal to one if that's the case we will just return the empty array and the next case is what we will do is like we will add a loop for loop and this time let i is equal to two it's the same but where is the change this time we are going to do until square root so i times i less than or equal to num okay and then we will do i plus plus inside this what we will do is like while the number is divisible by i which means number percentage i is equal to zero so until this is the case what we will do is like we will just push these prime factors into the output array as well as we will divide the num by this prime factor so that the number gets decreases okay great but so this is how it will be continuing but now what we need to do is like at the end you need to also check if num is greater than one if that is the case then you will also do output dot push of num and then at last we will just return the output okay the reason why we are having this if of num greater than one is let's give you an example so let's take an example so let's take an example of 28 okay example 28 what we will do we will divide 28 divided by 2 correct initially so this will go so what happened we will get 14 14 will in turn be divisible by 2 so we will get 7 but now 7 can be divisible right now the 7 if you see it will come out right so in the case of this program 7 times 7 is greater than or equal to or less it's greater than the number actually but it is a prime divisor right so that's the case why we have if number is greater than 1 then we push the number so it's the left out number which we are trying to push got it cool so we return the output so now let's change this function so prime factors of 2 2 2 2 now let's try running this again you see we get the same similar expected output great so now that i have shown you one efficient solution if you remember from the power we can make this three times faster right based on the fact that if we divide initially with the two and three so try to do that like how we did it for uh, prime factors and we will see in the solution video thank you so welcome back hopefully you are able to solve this problem efficiently if not yeah let's do it now so let's create a new function called prime factors 3 and this takes num and uh, inside this as usual what we will do initially we will create an output array so let output is equal to mg array and then if num is less than or equal to 1 then we will just return the output okay if not what we will do is like if you remember we initially need to check for the divisibility of 2 so num uh, modulus 2 until it is equal to 0 what we will do we will just do output dot push of 2 and then we will also reduce the number by dividing it by 2 so num divided by 2 cool after 2 what we will do we will do the same thing for 3 so num percentage 3 is equal to 0 so until it is divisible by 3 we will do output dot push of 3 remember we are just trying to do the same thing like what we did for prime number nothing different 
only thing is different is that we are all pushing it as well as we are dividing this number okay and uh, num divided by three this time <clears throat> now that uh, okay let me zoom in a little bit now that we are done with this both uh, two and three let's start the loop if you remember we start the loop from i is equal to five and then it goes till square root of number right so i to n i into i less than or equal to num and then we will increment the i by six correct so inside this what we will do is like we will again do this while num modulus i until it is equal to zero we will do output dot push of i and then what we will do num is equal to num divided by i but this alone is not enough remember the plus 2 case so we will also check for that so while num modulus i plus 2 is equal to 0 so until this is equal to 0 we will do output dot push off i plus 2 and then num is equal to num divided by i plus 2 great so now once we are out of the slope there might be some uh, prime factors that are greater than 3 right this time because for less than 3 we are checking out here explicitly so we will do if num is greater than 3 then what we will do we will do output dot push off num nothing else and in the end we will just return the output great so now let's change this from prime factors 2 to prime factors 3 so i'm changing it and now let's try running this code okay so yeah as expected 2 to 3 13 3 3 5 7 it's expected value right so 12 it should give you 2 to 3 and then 13 gives 13 3 1 5 gives 3 3 5 7 and 1 gives empty array great so that's all that's all for this video but uh, let me give tell you like how this seems to work so as usual if you remember let me change the color one is not a prime number and we also divide divide by two and three so let's get rid of that so four is uh, the thing is what i want to sh uh, share here is that uh, why we are not looking for four and five is that four is also a factor in some cases right but the thing is two is actually a factor of four which means we are covering all the fours inside this three itself i mean two itself because two times two is four right so hence we are not taking this into account so hence the way which we worked out with the prime factor works here as well okay so just a small uh, uh, clarification so let's see in the next video thank you welcome back to this new video in this video we are going to talk about devices of a number what is, what is basically devices of a number so let's take the input of 15 so from 1 to 15 what are the numbers that can divide 15 those are the devices of a number this includes prime numbers as well as composite numbers so in this case if you take 15 we know 1 will divide 15 3 5 and 15 2 will not divide 15 right because it doesn't divide it uh, properly so these are the devices if you take 20 as an example one can divide 2 4 5 10 and 20 got it and for 13 1 and 13 i think this should be really straightforward okay so first let's solve it in a naive way so what is this naive way what you need to do is like just run a loop from 1 to n and check whether a number is divisible okay if number is divisible that's all basically you just need to run a loop and then check if the number is divisible if the number is divisible we just add it to the array got it hope this is really simple so see you in the solution video thank you welcome back to this solution video so let's see how to solve this naively so let me create a new file 09 devices.js 
and inside this file let's create a new function called devices and let's say it takes the num as an argument and inside this as a first step let's initialize the output array so that we can push the uh, devices now we'll just run a loop from let i is equal to one and this goes until less less than or equal to num and then we will just increment by one and inside this loop we will just check whether if num modulus i that whether it is divisible by i basically we're checking whether num is divisible by i so if the reminder is zero then we know it is divisible so we'll just push output dot push of i and in the end we will just return the output hope this is really straightforward right we just run the loop from one to num and then whenever a number is divisible we just push it to the output array and then at last we return it so let's add some test cases so console dot lock devices of 15 and let's add a couple of more so 20 13 and then 100 cool so now let's try to run this so node 09 devices yeah as expected you see we're getting the output as 1, 3, 5, 15, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 1, 3, 1, 2, 4, 5, 10, 20, 25, 50, and 100. So these are the devices in a naive way. So what is the time complexity of this? As you could see, it runs theta of n times. And what is the space complexity? Space complexity, it is the space of theta or uh, I mean a big go of devices, right? Number of devices. But ideally, this is just for the purpose of us, right? to just return an output so you can if you're considering this then you can consider it as a uh, big o of devices number of devices if not you can also consider it as big o of one as well if you are just printing right so basically the space is uh, debatable but as for the time complexity it is big o of n okay great cool so see you in the next one okay welcome back in this video i will give you an overview of how to solve this more efficiently so that you can try to solve it on your own and then we will meet back again in the solution video so basically this is based on the fact which we have already discussed the fact is that devices always appears in pairs so for example what are the devices for 30 1 comma 30 2 comma 15 3 comma 10 and 5 comma 6 so basically if you think when we are trying to get one of the devices we also get the other devices as well okay and only thing is you need to just run this loop until square root of n right because until then uh, we will know like above that we will not find any devices so basically you just need to run a loop from uh, 1 to the square root of n and then you will get both the devices but only thing is like there are some cases for example in the case of 25 you see 5 and 5 we are getting two fives but we just need to print once right so you need to be wary of that just think about it how you can uh, print it only once also to complicate this problem i'm going to say you need to print these devices in order i have given clues like devices always appears in pairs and you need to run from one to square root of n and uh, when you're running for each of the devices you also get another device as well but the challenge is you need to print the loop in order okay so think about it try to solve in the coding exercise if not just look in the solution video thank you welcome back guys so i hope uh, you are able to solve the problem i know it was a little tricky but no worries let's solve it let's solve it together now okay so i'm going to show two ways two ways meaning like first way will not give you the sorted output but the third one will give you the sorted output but yeah anyway let's start so function divisors two of num okay now as usual let's assign let output is equal to an empty array and then what we are going to do is that this time we are going to run the loop for let i is equal to one and then you remember it's going to be square root of n so i times i 
is less than or equal to num and then we will do i plus plus you might have a question like how this loop is getting worked right the thing is until the square root of number and like i into i is less than or equal to num we will find the devices but apart from that we can't find the devices because the numbers will be greater than the num if you multiply by anything so that's the reason for example let's say we are finding 25 right so what is the square root of 25 it's 5 so we are going to run this loop till 5 but let's say it's going to be 6 right in the next point is you can't have a divisor or a value that will divide 6 into something equally that so that you will get 25 so that's the reason this is the mathematical form uh, idea of uh, going till the square root of n works here okay so we are also going here till the square root of n and if you remember when if you remember from the last video i said devices appears in pairs right so we are going to make use of the fact over here so what we will do is like if num plus uh, modulus i which means if the reminder is zero after doing the modulus then we know we have this divisor so output dot push of i but at the same time we know it appears in pass right so what we will do is like if of math dot floor of remember if we divide two devices that is for example let me show it to you guys yeah for example if you take the 15 as the case right so what are the devices 1 comma 15 and 3 comma 5 right so if you multiply 3 and 5 we get the number so now we have this one divisor so in order to get the other divisor what we can do we can divide the number by this divisor right so that's what we are going to do over here so math dot floor of num divided by i why are we doing math dot floor because we don't want a floating point number hence and what we are going to check is if this is not equal to the case of i why are we checking this condition for example if you take the case of 25 right when you take the case of 25 yes uh, if you see 5 into 5 is one of the devices and we need to print only one five and we don't want another five right so that's the reason we are checking whether the math dot floor of num slash i is not equal to i if this is not equal to i then we will push it so we will just push the math dot floor of num slash i okay and at the end we return the output great and let's see how this test case fans out okay now if i try to run this program you get the same output cool but if you see the outputs are not sorted so let's make it sorted so in order to make it sorted i will just copy this again and let's say it is divisors of three and we have let output this uh, mtra this is fine and after that what we will do is like we will have one loop and we will just remove this but one small change we are going to do i will explain why we are making the change shortly rather than less than or equal to we are just going to do less than okay now what we will do is like we will run another loop and this time we are going to do a reverse of the loop so let me take this uh, variable outside so let i okay so for example let's say we are doing this for number 20 okay so square maximum it will go till this 4 right because uh, 16 is the which is 4 into 4 16 is less than number if you do 5 into 5 it is greater than 20 so what we will do is like this i will go till 4 and then in the next loop when i becomes 5 this will not be executed so now we know when we come out i value is 5 so what we will do is like until i is greater than or equal to 1 then i minus minus okay now inside this loop what we will do is we check whether if num 
percentage i is equal to zero so whether the remainder is zero whether it is divisible if this is the case then we can just do output dot push of math dot floor of num divided by i okay cool now if we try to run this problem okay i need to change it divisors of three and let me zoom in a little bit i forgot to zoom sorry guys okay so now i have changed this to divisors of three now if i try to run it looks like we i can yeah one step above it looks like we are getting the output correctly right but unfortunately if you see for the second output of devices 3 of 20 we are getting a duplicate right and rest of the things seems to work fine so in order to avoid this duplicate we need to make slight changes so what we will do is like i'm gonna say const temp is equal to we know at this point i is 5 so i am gonna do minus one of it okay and inside this check i will also add another ampersand and i will say not of math dot floor of num divided by i is less than or equal to temp so basically what i am trying to do over here is like if the number which we are trying to get this right the other divisor if it is less than or equal to temp then we know we have already uh calculated that and put uh, and pushed it to the output array over here so i'm just going to check whether that is not the case so if it is not less than or equal to temp then i just do an output dot push okay cool so so now whenever the number is less than the already processed now we will not push it now let's see how the output looks like so if i try to run again you see now we don't get the duplicate okay cool so now that we have solved this efficient problem what is the time complexity of this if you see we are trying to run it square root of times and then some kind of loop right so basically it's kind of running square root of n times and space complexity depending on whether you take this into account or not if you take into account then it's the number of devices big o of devices if not big o of one cool so see you in the next one welcome back this is a follow-up video on the previous lecture i forgot to inform something or explain something like as to how this works compared to this previous method okay so basically what we are trying to do is let's take this take this 20 as an example right so once again okay when we take this 20 as an example you see we have a two loops now correct so initially it starts with one whether one is less than 20 yes and uh yeah it is also divisible right we push the one and now we come to two two into two is whether it is less than num four is less than num and uh, whether it is divisible yes so we push the two as well and then i becomes three and nine is less than or num yes so but but in this case it is not divisible so we don't push it and then i becomes 4 which means 4 into 4 16 less than num and 4 is divisible yes so we push the 4 as well but now you see compared to the last program here in the last program we had less than or equal to rather over here we have just less than okay so we have process till 4 and then when i plus plus is done now i becomes 5 but then 5 into 5 is not less than 25 right it's 25 is not less than 20 so which means we come out of this loop so at this point what happens is like i'm gonna take a const a temporary variable so until whatever is processed which means whatever is processed meaning here we have is5 minus 1 so until 4 we have process inside this loop right so i'm setting this const temp value as 4 now we create another loop and in this loop what we are doing is that we are running this loop until i is greater than or equal to 1 now what is the value of i it is 5 and now we check whether num percentage i is equal to 0 of course 5 percentage i is equal to 0 but the thing is we also check math dot floor of num by i num by i is what 
20 divided by 5 which is 4 and it is less than or equal to temp because it becomes true right because in this case temp is also 4 so we don't push the 5 over here so what happens we decrement the i now in this case it becomes 4 when it comes to 4 num percentage i is of course is equal to 0 but this time math dot 4 of num dot i is 5 and it is greater than temp so we just push the 5 over here so that's how whole thing works and we also remove the duplicates okay cool so see in the next one welcome back to this new video in this video we we need to print out an array maybe not print out we need to return an array that will give us all the prime numbers till the number n including n for example take the case of an input 10 so if you give input as 10 then it should give us 2 3 5 and 7 these are all prime numbers that are less than or equal to 10 so for the example of 30 it's going to be 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 23 29 all the numbers that are less than right less than or equal to the 30 and these are all prime numbers so basically we need to just return list of prime numbers that is less than or equal to n so i'm going to give you a clue on how to solve this naively in the naive solution of this problem what we are going to do is we will run the loop from as usual from 2 to n okay and then we will check for each number whether it is a prime or not that's all okay so basically you will run the loop from 2 till n and then we will check whether each number is a prime number or not if it is a prime number then we are going to add that to the list of array got it but remember we are starting from 2 and not 1 the reason being that 1 is not a prime number okay i hope this clue is sufficient to solve this problem try to solve it on your own in the next coding exercise see you in the solution video thank you okay welcome back to the solution video let's see how to solve this problem in a naive way so i'm going to create a new file this time i'm going to call this as c you will know in the next video why i'm going to call this as c but anyway just ignore it for now okay and the function name is c and we will get the number as an input and now inside this what i will do is like i'm going to say let output is equal to empty array like usual and then let's say let's start the for loop from let i is equal to 2 as i said and this time it's going to run i is less than or equal to num and then we will increment the i and inside this what we will do is like we will check for each i whether it is a prime or not so is prime of i if it is prime then we will just return output dot push of i okay that's all actually and at the end we will just return the output so for till the number n if it's a prime number we are just pushing it okay let's add some test cases so console dot log of c of 10 so let me copy this paste it a couple of times and let's say 25 and then 30 okay but remember we also need to copy the is prime so let's go to the older file prime.js and i'm gonna copy this and let's paste it to the 10th one so probably below this and let's rename it to is prime got it now let's try running this program okay it's going to be 10 c.js yep as expected you see we get 2357 all our prime numbers and for 25 19 23 and 29 for 30 cool so now we get all the prime numbers less than or equal to the number so see you in the next video with more efficient solution okay bye okay welcome back to the overview of the efficient solution if you see the previous video took n times square root of n why does that take n times square root of n see this loop is running n times and we all know from the previous videos is prime is going to take square root of n time complexity and hence the overall time complexity is n times square root of n but then when we try to use the sieve of Eratosthenes, this time complexity is will be reduced to 
time complexity is going to be reduced to big O of n log log n. See the explanation or uh, proof for this is beyond the scope of this video because it involves too many mathematical things. So, but understand this is going to be far better than the older one because it's nearly going to end, right? Because log n is really slow, meaning log n is really slow to grow. So, which means it's kind of like more or less linear, right? Okay, so let's see how to do this using sieve of Eratosthenes. Yeah, this algorithm name sounds weird, but this is how it is. <laughs> what we are going to do is like, we are going to create an array of size n plus 1. Okay, and then we are going to fill it everything as true. And now we will loop through from 2 till square root of n, like we did for prime numbers. And we check for each i whether it is a prime. If it is prime, then we will loop through all this prime and for the factors of this number i right for example if it is 2 uh, then uh, from 4 okay not 2 not including 2 because 2 is a prime number so from 4 all the factors so 4 6 8 10 12 everything we will set to false we will do the same for all the numbers till square root of n okay let's get through an example let's say we are trying to find all the prime numbers less than or equal to 20 okay so let me change the color okay now we know one is not a prime number so you can just ignore it so we are starting from the loop number what two right so when it starts the loop right it will start from i into i which means two into two which means it starts from four so when it comes to four you know everything here is set to true so now when it comes to 4 let's say we are setting it to false 6 false 8 false 10 false let, let's let me let me not put this false if i just strike it out then it means it is false okay so 12 14 16 18 20 so the factors of all these things are striked out now we increment the i by 1 what is the next one it's 3 so 3 into 3 is 9 so all the factors of 9 i mean 3 so from 9 all the factors of 3 so 9 is done 12 is already cut 15 18 is already done now if we increment 4 right 4 and 4 times 4 is less than 20 and then if you come and visit this 4 it is already set to false so we just ignore it okay now when it comes to 5 it is not less than or equal to 20 right because 25 is greater than 20 so now what do we need is like we come out of this loop we start one more loop and then we print out these prime numbers like 2 3 5 7 11 13 17 19 so how is this working actually this idea being that for each numbers we are trying to go through all the factors of it right for example in the case of 2 we went through all the factors starting from 4 and same with 3 so when it comes to 4 all the factors of 4 like 8 12 are also factors of 2 which means we have already made it as false and hence we did not go through for false so at the end what happens is like we just have the numbers left whatever the numbers left as true or the prime numbers okay so we will look through and then print out again so i hope you got the idea about sieve of Eratosthenes. So try to solve it on your own. We will see you again in the solution video. Thank you. Welcome back. Hopefully you are able to solve the problem. If not, no worries. Let's try to solve it together now. So let me create a new function. Function sieve2. Now you know what why I gave the name as uh, sieve, right? It's sieve of Eratosthenes. Yeah. So C2 now as usual let's get the let output is equal to an empty array and apart from that we will also create an array which called uh, is prime and this is going to be of size so I'm gonna use new array method to create it so to new array of num plus one okay and then I'm gonna fill it as row great okay so we have an array 
that is filled with true as well now what we will do is like we will run a loop so for and the loop starts from 2 and then we do we go till i times i that is square root of n right so i times i is less than or equal to num and then we do i plus plus and inside this what we do is like we first check if of is prime of i if is prime of i is true so initially everything is true right so initially when we go inside this and i is 2 so is prime of i is as well which is is prime of 2 is true as well so now we know it is true so what we will do now we will go we will start another loop which is let j and it starts from i times i which means in this case from 4 okay because i is 2 right initially to start off with and it runs till j is less than or equal to num and then j plus equal to i so which with each iteration we are jumping by i which means initially it is jumping by 2 so now inside this what i'm going to do is like i'm going to set is prime of j is equal to false what initially we are doing is that we are marking all the values of false which means we are marking it as false it means that it is not a prime number so it happens for 3 and then it happens for 4 something like that okay but when it comes to 4 right is prime of 4 is all, all already false so it will not be this loop will not be getting executed cool now that we have marked all the numbers that are uh, not primes as false now when we come out of this loop and run another loop that starts from 2 and it runs till i is less than or equal to num and then i plus plus now what we do is like we check if is prime of i if it is true then we know it is a prime number right so output dot push off so we do output dot push off i and in the end we can just return this output great so that's all so now let's try running this program so c of 2 c of 2 c of 2 cool so now if you try to run this program you see we get the same output but in fact we can make this even more concise let's see how to do that so let me copy this and paste it as c3 this time yeah this all holds true but this time what we are going to do is that we will run the loop from 2 but this time not i into i but i is less than or equal to num and then i plus plus now what we are going to do is you will remove the second loop we know before going you know like whenever this is, is prime of i returns true then it is a prime number right so what i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna push directly to output array so output dot push of i after pushing this prime number we also set all its factors to false okay that's all actually to be frank nothing else <laughs> and one question you might have is like why are we starting from i into i for example let's take the case of three right it starts from nine what about the previous numbers are they not do we need not consider that the thing is all the numbers less than 9 in some way are divisible by numbers less than 2 i mean less than 3 sorry in this case it's just 2 right take the example of 6 6 is divisible by 2 and then we come 9 right so this is the idea behind it and hence we can safely start from i into i okay cool so that's all for this video see you in the next problem thank you welcome back to this next problem this problem is about computing power so let's see what this is about for example if i provide input x as 2 and n as 3 then the output should be 8 why is that it's kind of like calculating 2 power 3 so what is 2 power 3 it's 2 into 2 into 2 so 2 into 2 is 4 4 into 2 is 8 okay and similarly some more examples when x is equal to 5 and n is equal to 3 we are calculating 5 power 3 so 5 into 5 is 25 and 25 into 5 is 125 and when we do 5 power 0 it should be equal to 1 okay so this is the idea of computing this power and let's start off with a naive solution the clue for the naive solution is that we will just run a loop from 0 to n minus 1 or if you want from 1 to n and inside each loop inside this loop we will just do result is equal to result into x okay 
i hope uh, i have given you more than enough clue try to solve the coding exercise we'll meet again in the solution video hey welcome back to this video we will try to solve the computing power problem in a naive way okay so let me create a new file so 11 computing underscore power dot js let me create a function called computing power and this is going to take x and then n which is x power n is what we are trying to calculate okay and then i'm going to initialize a variable called result and let's initialize it to one now let's start a for loop this loop starts from zero and it goes till i is less than n and then we increment i each time and inside this loop what we will do is like result is equal to result times x so each time we multiply the result by x so how many times this x will be multiplied n times and at the end we are just going to return the result so let's add some test cases control dot log computing power of 2 comma 3 let's copy it a couple of more times and 5 comma 3 and probably 3 comma 0 okay what are we expecting the first one should return 8 second one is 125 and third is 1 right okay so node 11 computing power yes as expected that's the output what is the time complexity of this time complexity is like we are trying to run this n times right it's based on this n so it's it's kind of like we go of n and what is the space here we just uh, don't use much space apart from this constant result so i mean one variable result so we can say the space complexity as we go of one okay so in the next video let's work on this in a more efficient way welcome back to this efficient solution so this is going to be the first efficient solution which is going to use a recursive approach so let's say we are trying to find out the power of x power n now the idea of this uh, solution is that depending on the value of n there are two cases if the n is even then what we are trying to do is like we will just calculate power of x and then we will do a floor of math dot floor of n divided by 2 so we are just trying to cut the problem by 2 whenever the number is even and once we calculate this what we will try to do is like we will try to create a temporary variable which is nothing but a multiplication of itself for example temp is going to be equal to temp into temp after this once we know that's temp we'll calculate temp into temp is equal to temp into temp and then we will return back but if the case is odd then what we are going to do is like we are going to calculate based on power of x comma n minus 1 into x it's correct right because we know odd is like for example in the case of 2 power 3 right the solution is going to be 2 power 2 into 2 and in order to calculate power of 2 comma 2 we can make use of this even case okay now at the end we are just going to return the value so in order to give you a more clear picture power of 3 5 3 comma 5 is going to be power of 3 comma 4 into 3 and 3 power 4 is going to be power of 3 comma 2 into 3 comma 2 so let's get to an some idea about uh, how this recursion call stack is going to be let's say we are trying to calculate 3 of 5 and initially we will say power of 3 comma 2 and this will again call 3 comma 1 and this time this is remember odd and this time again it will call 3 comma 0 3 comma 0 is going to return 1 okay and this is going to return again 3 comma 0 is 1 into 3 to the parent 3 comma 1 3 comma 1 if you remember what it will do is like it will again return 3 into 3 right so we have the return value of 3 and then it returns 3 into 3 and in the main function what we are going to do is like it's going to call 3 into 3 since it's odd right 3 comma 5 so we are going to return 3 into 3 3 into 3 and then 3 okay this is how the whole solution is going to work if this is a little bit confusing don't worry we will tackle this in the solution video please but please take this idea and try to solve this on your own in the solution video
okay welcome back to the recursive efficient solution let's tackle this so let me create a new function so function computing power 2 of x comma n okay and inside this initially what i'm gonna do is like i'm gonna add the base case so here the base case is if n becomes equal to zero if it is zero then we will just return the one so this is the base case next what i'm going to do is like i'm going to create a temp variable and then assign it to computing power of 2 we are just calling this function recursively so x we will pass the x but this time i'm going to do math dot floor of n divided by 2 so this will keep on running until computing power or n becomes 0 right we will come back to this again now once we are out of this what i'm going to do is like i'm going to say temp is equal to temp times temp okay now that we have this temp dot temp now what we can do is like if n percentage 2 if n is divisible by 0 basically if it is equal to 0 triple equals then we know we have an even power which means we can just return the temp if it is an odd power then we will return this temp multiplied by x okay that's all actually the problem is so let's copy this test cases yeah. let's try to run this node 11 computing power yeah we get the same output so basically what's happening is like initially let's take the example of 2 power 3 or maybe 3 power 5 itself right from what we see here 3 power 5 so we come here n is not 0 it's 5 so we call computing power of 3 comma n by 2 5 comma 5 by 2 is 2.5 and at flooring it gives us 2 so we just call back power of 3 by 2 so it will again call itself n is not 0 this time it will be computing power of 3 comma 1 so 3 comma 1 is called and again this will be called computing power this time 3 and then 1 by 2 is 0 0.5 and hence flooring it will become 0 so when calling power of 3.0 again this times it comes inside this base condition and hence it returns 1 okay so now computing power of 3 comma 0 has returned the value 1 which means it comes back to the power of 3 comma 1 now the temp is set to 1 after that what we do we just do temp is equal to temp into temp so 1 into 1 so temp is still 1 now we check whether the power is an even or odd we could see clearly that this is an odd so what we do we do 1 into whatever that x so this times 1 into 3 we just return 1 into 3 to power of 3 by 2 okay so now what happens 1 into 3 is returned right so basically now power of 3 by 2 has temp value as 3 okay so now we do 3 into 3 now we check whether power is an even actually they should come here guys this return value i have made a small mistake yeah this should be somewhere around here okay happening and uh, n percentage 2 is equal to 0 so this, so now we return just 3 into 3 okay so now 3 into 3 comes back to this 5 so when we have 5 we calculate again we already have 9 right 3 into 3 so we again do 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 okay and since it is also an odd we again multiply it by 3 so if you see we get 3 power 5 so that's what we are returning over here this one 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 into 3 this also has to come over here guys yeah sorry so that's how this solution recursive solution works so what is the time complexity as you could see this goes for log n times right basically uh, time complexity is we go of log n and similarly space complexity is going to be we go of log n okay so let's in the next video go over the uh, iterative solution because we know always iterative solution takes less space so let's see how that works okay see you in the next one
Welcome back to this video. In this video, we are going to talk about this efficient solution for computing power using iterative approach. This iterative approach is completely different to the recursive approach which we saw in the last video. So, what is the logic behind this? The logic behind this is based on this mathematical principle that every number can be written as a sum of powers. So, basically, if it is 3 power 10, right, then we can call it as 3 power 8 into 3 power 2. Similarly, for 3 power 19 is, it's going to be 3 power 16 into 3 power square into 3 power 1. So, if we just sum, sum these powers, then we will get the 3 power 19. But what it has to do with this computing power? That's where we are going to make use of this bits or binary representation. This iterative approach is also called as binary exponentiation. So, how are we going to do this? Let's see. For example, take the example of power 10. 10's binary representation is 1010. Okay. And 19's binary representation is 10011. So here is where our logic comes into the picture. So take the for example of 1010 and we are trying to do calculation for 3 power 10. The first power is nothing but 3 power 1. And second is 3 power 2. And next is 3 power 4 and not 3 power 3. Remember, it gets incremented by 2 or power of 3 into c 3 power 1 is 3 right so 3 into 3 is 3 power 2 3 power 2 into 3 power 2 is 3 power 4 3 power 4 into 3 power 4 is 3 power 8 now whenever the number is equal to 1 right binary representation is 1 the bit is 1 if you try to calculate those values it's 3 power 2 into 3 power 8 which is 3 power 10 again for the clarification let's take the example of 3 power 19 as well so it is 3 power 1 3 power 2, 3 power 4, 3 power 18, 3 power 16. Now let's take the bits which has 1 as value. 3 power 16 into 3 power 2 into 3 power 1. You see, it's the same representation over here. So, now that I have given you a clue of what we need to do, try to make use of this fact and calculate the power. If you are not able to solve it, don't worry. We will see you in the uh, solution video thank you okay welcome back to this iterative solution let's see how to solve this so as a first step let me create a new function called computing power 3 and this is going to take x as well as the n and as a first step let me initialize the variable result to 1 now here comes the logic so as you remember we need to loop over this binary representation of this num power right it's not the uh, x it's the x power n so which is the power what we will do is like i'm going to say this there is a loop which is going to run so this is going to run until n is greater than zero so until n is greater than zero now what we need to do is we need to get the last binary representation value okay how can we get this last binary representation value? It's actually easy. We just need to check if n is divisible by 2. So n mod 2, if that is not equal to 0, then we know we have a binary representation with 1 and not 0. Okay. If it is 0, then it will be divisible. If it is not 0, then we know it is going to be having a binary bit as 1. So now that if we have 1, what we need to do? We just need to uh, update the result to result times x. So if this is not the case, then for all other cases, irrespective of you know like whether it is uh, 1 or 0, if it is 1, we do this. If it is 0 or 1, then after computing this, what we are going to do is we will update the x this time if you remember 3 times 1 is 3 square and next iteration it becomes 3 power 4 so what we need to do we just need to multiply x by itself okay so for example let's take this example of 3 power 10 initially it is 0 right so n percent is 2 is equal to 0 it will not be result will not, is not updated but then we are doing 3 times 3 so now it becomes 9 Correct right, for the next iteration it is 9. 
So now then when it comes to the next time we again check uh, okay there is one more step before this if you see now we have calculated this last binary bit so now we need to move to the next bit we need to get rid of this bit so in order to do that if you have been uh, familiar with high school mathematics right how do we get this binary representation for example take 10 we divided by 2 we get 5 and we again divided by 2 we get the uh, 2 and then 1 right we again divided by 2 1 0 so this time 0 so if you see we are getting 1010 so as you could see we just need to divide the number by 2 in order to get the last bit out so what we will do here is that we will also follow the same so n is equal to math dot floor of n divided by 2 now when it comes to the next iteration it will check whether it is uh, not equal to 0 if not equal to 0 then this result is updated and again we multiply it by x into x which means if it comes as 3 power 2 the next iteration will be 3 power 4 so we are just trying to increase the power by 2 okay cool so that's all so let's try to update the test case and see whether everything works fine okay looks like i have made a mistake oh okay it's capital m Okay, I haven't returned the result, so return result. Now, yes, as expected, 8, 125, and 1. What is the time complexity of this approach? This is also going to take log n times, but the space is we go of 1. Okay, great. So, see you in the next video. Thank you. Okay, welcome to the uh, solution for practice problem 1, which is about absolute value. So let me create a new file 12 absolute underscore value dot js and inside this I'm gonna create a function called absolute value and let me take the num as an argument and it's as simple as just returning if num is less than zero. So we do a ternary operator. And if num is less than 0, I just return minus of num. So minus of minus becomes plus. If not, we just return the num. So let's add some test cases. So console.log absolute value of minus 23. And probably let me copy this again. And if I pass just 23 as well, it should give me some 23. So let's try running this. So node 12 absolute value.js. Yes, it works as expected. Hope you are able to solve it as well. It's a simple one. See you in the next video. Yeah, welcome back. So welcome back to the solution of the problem number of digits in a factorial. This might look very simple at onset, but there is some trickiness to it. Because you know, like in computers, uh, in programming languages like javascript integers can take up only a maximum of certain number of num numbers right there is a maximum value a number can go up to so we need to solve this by making use of the fact that there is a maximum value and hence if you do it the usual way of doing factorial this might be overflowing and sometimes you might have seen an error so how are we gonna solve this so let's first understand for example let's assume i'm giving a number something like 5 and its factorial is 120 right so we need to return the number of digits so the output is 3 great now we already know counting digits and factorial but that doesn't would have, that will not work out here so how are we gonna solve this this solving of this problem is based on this mathematical logic so what that is that for example let's say number from 0 to 9 and till 9 9 and 9 9 9 9 9 9 9 and it goes on okay five so what happens is like for the scale of these numbers if you take this log of nums 
until this and this it will be in the range of 0 to something like uh, less than 1 okay from here it will be like from 1 to less than 2 so it goes on so it's here it starts with 2 and it is less than 3 if you see this log is always one number less than the for example if it is from 0 to 9 we know number of digits is 1 right but it is always less than that so it's something like point something so it will be like we have one less digit so what we will do is like we will add 1 plus this log of number so this is what we are going to use it in our problem also there is one more fact the fact is that log of a into b is equal to log of a plus log of b okay so we are making use of this uh, couple of facts and gonna try this uh, try to solve this problem let's see how we can do that okay so coming back to the editor let me create a new file 13 num of digits in factorial okay dot js great so now let me create the function number of digits in factorial and this is going to take num as an argument and uh, let's initialize a variable number of digits is as zero and now here is comes the mathematical logic for let i is equal to one and i is less than or equal to num okay and then i plus plus inside this we usually multiply it right but if we multiply it for larger number of values this may cause issues for example let's take yeah we will do an example don't worry so inside this i plus plus now what i'm going to do is that uh num of digits is plus equal to math dot log 10 so this is where this is how uh, we use uh, you used to find the log of uh, number so javascript provides this inbuilt method so math dot log 10 that's why i said tricky you need to know these facts about logarithm as well as this inbuilt function so now we will pass i okay and in the end we will just return one plus math dot floor of number of digits okay uh yeah number of digits math dot floor you will it will be something like some fractional value you just add one to it and now let's add some test cases so console dot log uh yeah number of digits in factorial and let's pass five as well as let's say for the value 120 now if you try to run this problem node 13 yep we get the right output for example factorial of 5 is 120 so we get 3 and for the factorial of 120 it has 199 digits just to make a point over here let's go to this factorial.js file which we have already created right now if i try to call this factorial recursive with that same number right what was that number 120 okay so let me comment all other things so node 03 you see it gives some kind of a value but ideally if you try to run this in a browser or stuff it will overflow because this is a very big number exponentiation number which is like a very big number that can't be holded and hence we need to make use of this fact of this log logarithm and usually we will multiply the factorial number right if for example i pass 5 5 into 4 into 3 into 2 into 1 but we are making use of this logarithm fact that log of a into b is equal to log a plus b and hence we are doing a summation of it and in the end we are adding one to it because it is always one digit less so hence we are able to solve this problem so the time complexity is that we go of n and space complexity is we go of one great so see you in the next one
Welcome back to the problem for finding the exactly three divisors. So let me give you a clarity of what this problem is about. For example, if I pass input as six, I should get output as one. Why should I get output as one? There is only one divisor four, which has exactly three divisors. For example, what are the divisors of four? One, two, and four itself, right? Similarly, for i is equal to 10 i should get output as 2 because the devices are 4 and 9 4 we have already seen but for 9 if you take it's 1 3 and 9 so this is what we need to return the number of devices i mean the numbers of devices or numbers that have exactly three devices less than this input number so now that we know this 4 and 9 what are the uh, devices could you get any kind of correlation between this if you see all the number starts with one correct and then it has a prime number in this case two and three and if you see the third device they are all are squares of it so four and then nine so whenever there is a perfect square within this range which is less than number then we can say that that perfect square have exactly three devices like four and nine over here these are perfect squares meaning two square three square right especially perfect square is nothing but it's the prime number square for example take the case of 25 right 25 as well one and it is divisible by five and then 25 right five square 25 okay so hence we say 5 is also perfect square so perfect square is nothing but the prime number square so now it's clear right what we need to do so we just need to run a loop from uh, 2 till square root of n and if it is uh, prime then we have the perfect square how can i say like if it's a prime we can uh, say it's a perfect square because we are running this loop only till square root of n which means whatever the square uh, square roots or prime numbers which we are finding within the square root of n they're gonna have a perfect square so that's the reason okay cool so let's try to write this program so let me write so basically uh, let me create a new file 14 okay uh three devices dot js okay let me create a function called exactly three devices and then we will get the num and inside this we need to make use of the is prime right so let's go here and uh, we will copy this function because we need to know whether a number is prime or not let's not uh, recreate it because we have already done so right and now since we are here first thing we need to do is like let count is equal to zero because we are just initializing the count now what we will do is like we'll run a loop from for let i is equal to two and then it will run till i times i this is what i meant by square root of n less than or equal to num and then i plus plus now inside this loop what we will do is like we will check if is prime of i if that is the case then we will do count plus plus and in the end we will just return the count okay so let's add some uh, control log so control log exactly three devices and uh, what are the test cases uh, let me see yeah first add let's add a test case exactly three devices of six and we are expecting it to be one and the next case is 10 and let's add one more case something like 25 okay great so now if we try to run this program node 14 three devices dot js we get the output as we have one for six which is correct and then we have exactly three devices ten for uh, for ten it is two and then for twenty five it is three 
for 25 it is 3 right how it is 3 so basically the numbers that can be come come inside the square root of uh, 25 is 1 2 3 4 5 1 is not a prime number so leave it so if you see 2 is a prime number correct and 3 is a prime number and 4 is not a prime number 5 is a prime number and hence we get the output as 3 so all the prime number squares is the output great so this is the solution for getting the exactly three devices the basically the idea is to get the perfect squares perfect square is nothing but prime number squared okay prime number squared has only three devices that's the idea great thank you and before that one more thing the time complexity of this approach is basically if you see this code prime number is going to take how much square root of n right and here we are also running a uh, another uh, till, uh, loop till square root it's kind of like a uh, big go of n power 1 by 2 into 1 by 2 i guess probably yeah n by 2 n n power 1 by 2 into n power 1 by 2 so that is the time complexity in auxiliary space it's big o of 1 okay so it's big o of n power 1 by 2 into n power 1 by 2 uh because here as well we are doing an uh, i into i and here as well inside as well we will do a same operation so that's a big o of n power 1 by 2 into n power 1 by 2 for time complexity and we just use one variable count and uh, nothing uh, other than that so it's big o of 1 for space complexity okay okay thank you okay welcome to this problem this problem is i would name it as modulo addition i mean when i gave you this problem you might have thought like it is really really straightforward but the thing is it not the case it is not the case of course the problem is as such is very simple but you need to know a trick to solve this problem so what is the trick is about it's called modulo addition so basically if you're trying to add some two big numbers then there is a possibility that integers might overflow so in order to prevent that overflow what we usually do in this method is that we use this trick called sum modulus 10 power 9 plus 7 okay even i'm not sure what is this uh, 10 power 9 plus 7 is all about but it's the convention which people are using so we do a modulus modulus of sum with 10 power 9 plus 7 and we also make use of this distributive property for example if you want to do a plus b percentage c right sometimes if you just do a plus b first then this itself might be overflowing in order to avoid that what we can do is that we do a modulus c and b modulus c and we add it together and then we do again a modulus c okay so this is a distributive property which we will use to solve this problem so let's solve it so let me create a new file uh, 15 modulo addition dot js okay so function modulo addition and then we will get two numbers let's give it as a comma b okay and now what we will do is like let's get the modulus value out of the way so let m is equal to i'm going to use math dot pow 10 comma 9 and then i would say plus 7 now i will just return a modulus m and then plus b modulus m and again outside we will do another modulus with m okay that's all so let me add some couple of test cases as well so if i add something over here yeah these are the see these are like big numbers when we add it might overflow so now if we do node 15 modulo yeah these are the expected outputs cool this is how we solve modulo addition thank you okay welcome back to this video this video is about solution for multiplication under modulo so let me create a new file this is very similar to the uh, previous video which is modulus addition this is just for the multiplication we do the same distributive property of that modulus okay
so 16 modulo multiplication dot js so let's create a function function modulo mul for multiplication short and then let's get two uh, variables a comma b and now what we are going to do is like we will just return a modulus m so let's copy this modulus value from here okay so now a modulus m multiplied by b mod m and then again outside we will do mod m now let's add some couple of test cases we will use the same thing okay so we will just do console.log of these big numbers cool now if you try to run this program node 16 right 16 modulo multiplication modulo addition oh sorry i need to change this right i just copied and forgot to change this yep we get the output as 311 something and then we get zero cool so see you in the next video